What's up people? Welcome back to Motion Cap. We will be watching the recap of the movie. Coma. Enjoy the video. Sometimes they die before they get there. Like this one. More work for us. Dr. Susan Wheeler is one of the bright surgical residents at Boston Memorial Hospital. She spends most of her time working in the hospital and lives in an apartment with her boyfriend, Dr. Mark Bellows. Mark also works in the same hospital as Susan. He seems to be more interested in hospital politics and aspires to become the chief resident at Boston Memorial Hospital. On the other hand, Susan shows no interest in his talks related to hospital politics. At home, they argue about small things like who will use the bathroom first and who will heat the food. One day, they plan to have lunch together while Susan is about to leave for her class. She takes dance classes for an hour and has a fun time there. She mentions that it's the only way she can spend time away from the hospital. Next, Susan and her best friend, Nancy Greenlee are having a conversation when Nancy reveals that she is pregnant, but does not want the baby. Therefore, she decides to abort the baby without letting her husband know about it. For this purpose, she has to go through a minor surgical procedure that was scheduled for the next day. Nancy is a little worried about the surgery, but Susan calms her and explains that it is a minor procedure and that she will be okay. As the doctors prepare the surgical room for her surgery, Nancy is brought into the room. Since she is still conscious, she is given a dose of anesthesia. Once she goes unconscious, the doctors start the surgical procedure. Everything is going well but suddenly, her blood pressure begins to fall. The doctor becomes worried because everything seems normal, but weirdly, her blood pressure keeps fluctuating unnaturally. The doctors decide to calm down and complete the surgery nevertheless. Tragically, after the completion of the surgery, she does not wake up. And, the doctors declare her to be brain dead. When Mark finds out that Nancy is in a coma, he informs Susan about it. Hearing this, Susan is shocked and immediately rushes to see her friend. She is not able to accept the fact that a normal healthy person who was prescribed for a minor surgical procedure is declared brain dead. She goes through Nancy's medical charts and finds everything to be alright. But, Susan is determined to investigate further. She wants to know how and why this happened. Consequently, she goes to the laboratory of the hospital which conducted Nancy's test. She wants to know who prescribed the test but does not get the desired information. Susan then heads to the computerized data department and asks for a record of people who went into a coma during surgery. Surprisingly, she finds out that 10 people who were healthy and going through minor surgical procedures ended up in comas and never woke up again. This shocking truth motivates her to dig deeper into this case. Soon after, Susan gets to know that Nancy has died and is being taken for post-mortem. So, she goes to the hospital morgue where Nancy is being examined. She asks the pathologists about possible techniques to intentionally put someone into a coma without leaving any signs. One of the pathologists suggests that carbon monoxide poisoning can be the best way to do so. He further adds that these techniques will leave no signs that can prove the patient is intentionally put into a coma. When Susan connects the dots, she realizes that all such cases take place in operating room 8. She suspects that patients must be poisoned with carbon monoxide to put them into a coma. Nearly everyone in the hospital is against her investigation. Mark also tries to persuade her to stop thinking about it because he believes that it is merely a coincidence. Mark says that such risks are always there when anybody goes through a surgical procedure. Dr. Harris, the chief of surgery, personally calls Susan and tries to persuade and warn her to stop the investigation. She is warned because Susan took coma patients' data from last year which is against the hospital rules. Harris then takes the data back from her and asks her to stop thinking about it all and focus on her job, otherwise she might end up losing her job. Regardless of Dr. Harris's warnings, Susan is not ready to settle this case and goes to meet Dr. George, who is the chief of anesthesiology. She wants to check the record of those 10 healthy patients who went into a coma last year. But, Dr. George finds this insulting and thought Susan was accusing him of the deaths. Mark explains to Susan that Dr. George is a rather powerful person and it might be dangerous to upset him or go against him. Later, she is again approached by Dr. Harris to talk on the same matter. This time, he advises Susan to take the weekend off to cope with the grief of Nancy's death. 
Also, he asks her to consult with a psychiatrist, or else she can't continue her job at the hospital. Next, Mark and Susan plan their weekend and are hoping to spend quality time together. They go to different places to relax, have fun and be away from the hospital environment. During this time, Susan urges Mark to go to Jefferson Institute when she sees a highway sign for it. The place seems to be eerily quiet and lonely. Being curious, Susan walks into the building as Mark waits in the car. Inside, she meets a nurse who says that the tour for physicians is scheduled for Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Susan insists on taking a visit since she is already there, but the nurse doesn't allow her. Kelly, a hospital maintenance worker, gives a hint to Susan that whatever she is suspecting is true. Discreetly, he asks Susan to meet him that night in the maintenance room. But unfortunately, an unidentified man electrocutes Kelly and he dies on the spot. Susan then sets out to investigate the hospital basement and discovers a tank with a line going through the ventilation system from a 2 or 0.8. Now that she knows more than she should, Susan becomes the target of the killer. One night, when Susan is sneaking into Dr. George's room to look up information on the coma patients, the killer tries to attack her. Susan manages to escape after a brief struggle and captures him in the cadaver cooler in the anatomy department. Despite all the difficulties, she is successful in escaping, and eventually, she goes to Mark. In a state of paranoia and panic, she starts telling Mark everything that happened to her. She explains how she found the tunnel and the gas line which supplies carbon monoxide gas along with oxygen. Mark just listens to her and tries to calm her down. He makes her lie on the bed and goes to prepare tea for her and tells her that they will talk over tea. However, because of Mark's suspicious behavior, Susan is not able to trust him. Following her instincts, she silently runs away from there. The following morning, she wakes up in a hotel room. Then, she suddenly remembers that she needs to go to the Jefferson Institute for the tour that the nurse told her about. She rushes for it and manages to reach there on time. Susan takes the tour of what appears to be a cutting-edge, low-cost hospital for patients who are in a state of coma. She adjourns the tour to secretly explore the forbidden territory around the Jefferson Institute. For some time, she manages to walk around the Institute despite the strict security. CCTV cameras are installed everywhere in the hospital. But, since the security guards are distracted for a while, they do not notice Susan walking around. In the meantime, Susan learns that the Institute is only a cover for a global criminal market for human organs. Organs from patients are offered for sale to the highest bidder. She finds surgeons operating on coma patients to take out their organ and sell it to the highest bidder. Also, she hears the nurses talking and they address the name of Dr. George quite a few times. Unfortunately, the security guard notices her presence in the Institute through CCTV surveillance. After that, they make it nearly impossible for Susan to escape from the Institute. Despite the tight security, Dr. Wheeler is clever enough to escape from the eyes of the security guards. She climbs on the roof of the ambulance which is there to collect human organs for transplant. After she visits the Institute, Susan is now convinced that Boston Memorial Hospital purposely induces patients with carbon monoxide whose organs match the requirement of potential buyers. She concludes that carbon monoxide is poured from a secret tank in the basement to the anesthesia machinery in operating room 8, rendering the patient brain dead. To make all this happen, a radio signal seems to be controlling the line. Susan runs to Dr. Harris to tell him what she found out. She even mentions that Dr. George is the mastermind behind this crime. After explaining to him all that she found, Harris expresses his concern and says he is devastated to know about this. He then offers Susan a drink and asks her to calm down. While drinking, she notices all the certificates that Dr. Harris has in his room. All of the certificates address him as Dr. George A. Harris. This makes her realize that she has come to the wrong person. Susan now knows that Dr. Harris is the one behind the organ harvest business operating from ore. However, the moment she realizes the truth, it turns out that Harris has slipped a drug into her drink that gives her the symptoms of appendicitis. She experiences acute pain and is unable to function on her own. Dr. Harris then says that her symptoms appear to be very extreme and he decides to operate on her. Next, when Mark comes to meet Susan, she tries to tell him that she does not need the surgery. But, oblivious to the truth, Mark does not believe her and tells her she actually has symptoms of appendicitis. 
Meanwhile, when a staff informs Dr. Harrison is prepared for the surgery, he continually insists the staff prepare or. This arouses Mark's suspicion and whatever Susan told him earlier flashes in his mind. Immediately, he rushes to the basement and locates the gas line connecting the basement to or.8. On the other hand, Susan's surgery is progressing in the operation room. Realizing there is no more time left, Mark destroys the gas line that supplies carbon monoxide to the operating room. Then, after some time, we see the surgery on Susan is over. When he asks the anesthesiologists to bring her back, Dr. Harris is shocked and cannot comprehend how Susan is completely fine and normal. Finally, as the movie ends, we see that Dr. Harris realizes that he is exposed and cannot escape. Just then, the lights go off, indicating the downfall of him and his criminal business empire. The end. Thanks for watching.